Hello, the day has come to discuss the solutions, or the solution maybe, of the second lottery problem. You can only hear me, I'm sure you will recognize my voice. Yes, yes, I am Walter Lewin. You see here my bracelet and my ring. Okay, so I'm with you, but you can't see me. What was the problem? There are a thousand lotteries, there are different lotteries. Each lottery has a thousand tickets. Each lottery has only one price. You buy one ticket in each of the thousand lotteries. So you end up with 1,000 tickets. What is the probability that you win at least three prizes? And I want three digit precision. We discussed that earlier. In order to do justice to the solution, I have to discuss with you some number theory. Many of you have had this already in high school, but many of you have never seen it. And I want each one of you to be able to follow the solution. And therefore, I have to go through a little bit of number theory. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce you into the concept of factorial. N factorial. N is, a, is an integer. I hope you can see this. n is an integer, and n factorial is then defined as 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7, blah blah blah, all the way to times n, Nancy. So 1 factorial is 1, that's obvious. 2 factorial is 1 times 2, so that's 2. 3 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3, so that is 6. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 factorial, of course, so that's 24. 5 factorial is 5 times 24, so that's 120. For those of you who have some spare time, I propose you calculate 20 factorial. And then you can compare that with the number that I have there. All right. So now we're going to change the topic a little, but I will come back, of course, to the meaning of factorial. I have marbles, one bag of black marbles and one bag of red marbles. I take three black marbles out and one red marble, and I put them on my desk. One red and three black. And looking down on my desk, I will show you a picture of that, in how many different ways can I arrange the one red and the three black? You will have no difficulties answering that correctly. I will show you what it looks like on my desk. So here you see, clearly, there are four possible ways to do it. You can put the red one all the way to the left, position one, you can put it position two, position three, position four. So clearly, if we took out five marbles, four black and one red, there would be five different ways of arranging them. If we took out 35 black marbles and one red, a total of 36 marbles, there would be 36 different kinds of arranged them. If we took out 999 black marbles, and one red one, that means a total of thousand marbles, there would be a thousand different ways to arrange them. Now comes a question that I want you to think about. I'll give you a whole minute to think about it. 
I take out again marbles. This time two black and two red. And now I want to know in how many different ways can I arrange them now on my desk. Two black and two red. I'll give you a whole minute and during that minute I will make you look at one of my most famous demos which has almost become an icon for me. Swinging on the mother of all pendulums at MIT in the big lecture hall 26100. So you think about how many different ways can we arrange on my desk two black and two red marbles. And you get a whole minute. You see me swinging? Haha! <laughs> I love that. Okay, you have 20 seconds left. Just close your eyes and make a guess. Would it again be four different possibilities? Or maybe fewer than four? Or maybe more than four? Not so obvious, is it? Not to you, not to me either. Okay, you ready for this? Then I will show you the result. There are six different ways. And here you see them all six. Okay, so now you will say, okay, so what? So now we know it's six. Well, if you are a mathematician, you would want to know in the most general way if you took out N marbles, N as in Nancy, and of those N marbles, K, as in Kathy, were red. In how many different ways can I then arrange these marbles? So I repeat, the total number of marbles is N, as in Nancy. And K, which is also an integer, is the number of red marbles. In how many different ways can I arrange them? I will give you the answer because I will need it later on, but I will not prove that equation for you. Many of you have seen this, maybe some already in high school, but certainly in college. So we're going to look at the equation, so hold on to it. See this? And read with me. Top line. We have red and black marbles. And we place n marbles in a row of which k are red. There are m, I wrote that with a capital as in Mary, there are m different ways to do this. And that number m as in Mary it's not so obvious. So you see it here. That means N with Nancy, number of marbles, and K of them are red. 
The answer is n factorial divided by the product of k factorial and n minus k factorial. And you know what factorials are, so you should be able to use that equation, even though you may not be able to derive it, it's easy to, to use it. If n is 4 and k is 1, and that was the case in our first example with the one red one and three black ones, then the number of ways, if you use this equation, is 4. Well, that's exactly what you saw. If we have four marbles and two of them are red, then that means k is 2, well, then you use this equation, then you have six different ways. And that's exactly what we saw. So this equation is really at the heart of our problem. So now we're going to combine the idea of the factorials, which is in this equation, with the concept of a minimum of three prices. Okay. So read with me. What is now the probability of at least three prices? Well, you have these thousand tickets. And somehow you didn't win two prices. It's too bad you didn't get two prices. You didn't even get one price. And you didn't get zero prices. That means you must have gotten at least three. Think about that. Therefore, the probability that you win at least three prizes must be one minus the probability that you got no prizes at all, plus the probability that you got only one prize, plus the probability that you got only two prizes. So now it's up to us to calculate those three things, the probability of zero prices, the probability of only one price, and the probability of only two prices. The probability, which I will call P, of a price which holds for each ticket is one out of thousand, remember, because each lottery had only one price and there were a thousand tickets in each lottery. So that probability that any particular ticket that you take has a probability of only one thousandth of 0.1% that it is a winner. And so the probability that you didn't get any price at all means that every single ticket is a loser there are a thousand tickets and the probability of losing is 99.9%. It's 1 minus P. It's 999 out of a thousand. And so that is 90.9%. And so therefore the probability that you get, didn't get a single price must be that 0.999 to the power of 1000. And I write it here in a more professional way. I write it here as 1 minus P. You see, this is the probability P that you do get a price. So this P is 1000. And so 1 minus 1000 is 0 0.999. And you raise that to the power of 1000 and out comes that there is a 36 0.8%, there should have been a period, 36.8% that you win no prices. We saw that already during our first solution, right? So this is not new. Keep in mind that we need that number 
because that is this number, the probability of zero, that is 0 0.368, 36.8%. So now we have to calculate what is the probability of only one price. And if we succeed doing that, then we have to calculate the probability of only two price, and then we got it. Only two prices, I should say. All right, so let's first address the issue of only one price. Mm, yeah, only one price. Okay. Only one price. Read with me. What is the probability of winning only one price? The probability that one particular ticket and what I mean a particular ticket is, you have these thousand tickets on your desk, you pick any random one, that is a particular one that you choose, that you hold in your hand. The probability that one ticket that you have in your hand won a prize, but all others did not win a prize, must be the product of P, that's the one out of thousand, that's the one ticket that was a prize winner, times 1 minus p to the power 999, because all other 999 tickets did not get a price. So pick any one of your thousand tickets, then the probability that that one is a price, but all 999 others don't have a price, that probability is extremely small. Wow, but now you know better. You know that there are capital M, as in Miri, different ways to win one prize. It could be your first ticket, sure, but it could be your third ticket that won the prize, and it could be your last ticket that won the prize. And so therefore you don't even have to use the fancy equation, but you could. Nancy would be thousand and Kappa would be one, Kathy is one, and uh, that means there are a thousand different ways that you can win one prize. So therefore the probability that you only get one prize is this number times capital M, this number times thousand, that is 0 0.368 which is 36.8 percent. And you will say Wow, what a coincidence, because that was also the probability that we got zero prices. Well, yes, that is a coincidence. If you go to four-digit precision, you will see that the two numbers are not identical. If there were 2,000 lotteries, and each of them 1,000 prices, the two numbers would not be as close as they are. So yes, the fact that there is 36.8% probability of winning only one prize, which is also 36.8% of winning no prize at all, is closely the same because of the numbers that I chose. So it's not something that holds in general. So now we have solved the probability of zero prices and the probability of only one price. So now we are going to look at what the probability is of only two prices. So here we go. The probability of only two prices. Okay, read with me. What is the probability of winning only two prizes? The probability that two particular tickets get a prize but all others get no prize must be p squared. You know, p is the probability 
of winning a prize on one of your tickets, but now you want two tickets to win. So that probability makes it P squared. And then all others should not have a prize. So there are 998 tickets left. None of them should have a prize. And so this 1 minus P is 0 0.999. When I say probability that two particular tickets get a prize, I mean the following. You pick, pick ticket 1 and you pick ticket 35. And all others get nothing. This is the probability. I take two other particular tickets. Number 13 and number 360. The probability that those two our winners and no others is that same probability. So now you see the power where capital M, as in Mary, comes in. So N is now 1000 and K is now 2. And if now you apply that miracle equation, which I happen to know by heart, capital M is N factorial divided by the product of k factorial and n minus k factorial. That number capital M is now 499,500. And if you multiply that number now with this low probability, then out comes that the probability of only two prices is 0 0.1840. 18.40%. Notice that I changed to four digit precision. And there's a reason for that. Because we are now done. Now what we have to do is we have to subtract the probability that we get zero prices plus the probability that we get one price plus the probability that we get only two prizes, we have to subtract that from one, and that will give us the probability of at least three prizes. And that you will see right here. And I changed to four digit precision. This is the probability, 0.3677, that you get no prize at all. Earlier we rounded that off to 0 0.368. Three digit precision, so that was okay. But I want you to see there is actually a difference if you go four digits. The probability of only one price is 0 0.3681, 36.81%. And the probability, as you just have seen, of only two prices is 18.40%. These three numbers have to be subtracted from one and we have killed the problem. We've solved it. The probability of at least three prices is 1.02%. Holy micron. How many of you did it right? I don't know that yet, because I am taping this before I have seen your solutions. But I can assure you that not as many got it right this time as those who got it right on the first problem, which was much, much easier. In the process, and that is really my objective, I hope that many of you have learned something have learned something basic about number theory. They know the idea of factorial now, but they also know the famous equation. How many different ways can you arrange things? If you have N marbles and K of them are red, well, how many different ways can you arrange them? Okay, and we applied that to our lottery problem. Boy, you have no idea how many hours it took me to prepare this solution properly. I thought it through several nights, 
how I would do it, and I finally decided that it was a must for me to introduce factorial, and it was a must for me to also introduce the capital Mary, number of different ways, even though I decided not to derive that equation. All right, yes, yes, yes. I hope you're not angry at me that it was not too difficult for you. If it was, don't worry. It's okay if it was too difficult. We're still friends anyhow. Have a nice day and take care.